In the case of malware, having an effective IRP should be a mandatory thing in all organizations. It not only helps in minimizing the damage caused by an incident, but also helps in identifying the root cause and strengthening defense against future attacks. Hey everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about incident response plans that would help you effectively deal with malware. Now in the ever evolving landscape of cybersecurity, organizations face a constant and growing threat from malicious software, commonly known as malware. This malware, which includes viruses, ransomware, trojans, and other malicious code, brings a lot of significant risk to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of sensitive information. So to effectively work around the impact of malware incidents, organizations have to develop and implement good incident response plans, or IRPs for short. And so in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the essential components of a comprehensive incident response plan, specifically made to address the challenges that malware brings. But before we get into that, if you want to protect yourself from malware and other cyber threats on an individual level as well, the most efficient and effective method would be to install a reliable antivirus. So if you don't already have one or are looking for some suggestions, I'll be leaving some in-depth reviews on antiviruses that I personally recommend along with some discounts in the description down below. So make sure to check those out. Okay, so before we talk about incident response plans, it's really important to understand the nature of malware. Malicious software is designed with the intent to infiltrate systems, compromise data, and disrupt normal operations. This malware can enter your organization's network through different means, including email attachments, malicious websites, removable media, or compromised software updates. Once inside, it can execute a range of malicious activities, from data exfiltration to rendering systems inoperable. Now, why is an incident response plan so important in these scenarios? Well, an incident response plan is a structured approach that outlines the necessary steps to detect, respond to, and recover from cybersecurity incidents. In the case of malware, having an effective IRP should be a mandatory thing in all organizations. It not only helps in minimizing the damage caused by an incident, but also helps in identifying the root cause and strengthening defense against future attacks. A well-designed IRP enhances an organization's ability to respond quickly and efficiently, reducing downtime, reputational damage, and financial losses. Now, there are four key components for an effective incident response plan, and they're split into different phases. First, you have the preparation phase. The foundation of an effective incident response plan lies in the preparation phase, and organizations have to proactively establish and maintain a solid cybersecurity status. And this includes three main parts. The first part is risk assessment, identifying potential vulnerabilities and assessing the risk landscape specific to malware threats is really important here. This involves evaluating the organization's assets, understanding potential attack methods, and prioritizing critical systems. The second part is gonna be the incident response team. Forming a dedicated incident response team with clearly defined roles and responsibility is just as important. This team should consist of individuals with expertise in malware analysis, digital forensics, legal, communication, and IT. As for the third part, there should be a comprehensive communication plan. And that's because establishing effective communication channels is gonna be needed during the incident. Here, clear lines of communication should be defined, both internally among the team members and externally with stakeholders such as customers, partners, and regulatory authorities. Okay, now we move on to phase two, which is the detection and analysis phase. In the detection and analysis phase, the focus shifts to identifying and understanding the nature of the malware incident. First, you have a security information and event management, also known as SIEM. Implementing SIEM tools enables real-time monitoring of network activities and helps in the early detection of suspicious behavior. Then you have endpoint protection. Deploying advanced endpoint protection solutions helps detect and block malware at the device level. Regularly updating antivirus definitions is also important to stay ahead of emerging threats. The phase also includes malware analysis. Conducting in-depth analysis of malware samples provides insights into its behavior, capabilities, and potential impact. This information would help quite a lot in tailoring response strategies specifically for your organization. Now we move on to the third phase, 
which is the containment eradication and recovery phase. Once a malware incident is detected and analyzed, the focus shifts to containment, eradication, and recovery. First, you have to isolate effective systems and prevent the lateral spread of malware. This may involve segmenting the network, disabling compromised accounts, or blocking malicious communication channels. Next, you have to remove the malware from the affected systems. This may involve restoring systems from clean backups applying patches to vulnerabilities and removing any remains of the malware. Then you have to restore normal operations and consider this a priority. This includes verifying the integrity of restored systems, ensuring data accuracy, and closely monitoring for any signs of reinfection. Now we move on to the final phase, which is the post-incident analysis improvement phase. After resolving the immediate impact of a malware incident, you should conduct a thorough post-incident analysis to learn from the experience and improve your future responses. Try to document the key findings and lessons learned from the incident, as it helps define the incident response plan. This information can be really valuable in adapting strategies to emerging threats. Also, you should regularly update and test the incident response plan to make sure it remains effective in addressing the latest malware threats. That's mainly because cybersecurity is a dynamic field and threats are constantly evolving. Lastly, try to educate employees about the risks of malware and provide regular training and security best practices, which enhances the organization's overall security. A well-informed workforce is a valuable asset in preventing and mitigating malware incidents. And that's basically it for today's video on how to create an effective incident response plan to deal with malware. If you want to protect your device on a personal level as well, you can go for a reliable antivirus as it is the most effective and efficient method to do that. And for that, I'll be leaving some in-depth reviews of antiviruses that I personally recommend, as well as discounts in the description down below. Also, if you liked the content or found it useful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to see more of it. And if you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments, as I love to interact with you guys. And that will be all for today, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.